Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Continue on in our our study uh, in basic fiqh Umdat al-Ahkam And we were talking about Hayd We were talking about Menstruation And we were talking about the differences And the last dars we read A hadith of the Prophet wasallam, Which distinguished us For us The difference between Hayd uh, Hayd wa Istihada Hayd meaning menstrual blood or menstruation and istihada is any other blood aside from uh, any bl- other blood akramakum Allah as- that, that is other than um, men- menstrual blood or other than nifas nifas meaning the blood of postnatal bleeding so we reach the hadith of Um Habibata radiallahu ta'ala anha. An Aishata radiallahu ta'ala anha anna Um Habibata stahadat saba sinin. Fasa'alat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an dalik sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an dalik. Fa'amaraha an tagtasil. فَكَانَتْ تَغْتَسِلُوا لِكُلِّ صَلَاةِ رُوَهُ بُخَارِي وَمُسْلَمْ This hadith is also azim and it has many benefits and this hadith also it illustrates for us the love of the sahaba رضي الله تلا عنهم اجمعين the male and female from amongst them radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in their love for knowledge and their love for practicing the knowledge and practicing Islam correctly and finding out what the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was so the sahaba had an, a very strong love and ragba desire for knowing the sunnah of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So in this hadith of Aisha Radiallahu ta'ala anha She said that Um Habibata stahadat sabah sanin That Um Habiba She had this other blood That was flowing for her for seven years Meaning seven years without stopping and she asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about that. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded her to ghusl, to make ghusl, to, to make the, the, the bath or shower. And she used to make ghusl for every salat. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith is, is some, some ikhtilaf with the ulama. And we'll try to look at what the majority of the Salaf were on it re- regarding to this. So first, before we get into the, uh, the ikhtilaf and the things that we gain as a benefit from this hadith, we'll take a look at uh, a few things. So I think the meaning is clear. That Um Habiba, she'd been, re- she'd been bleeding for seven years straight, a, a type of blood. So it, it, it became clear that this is not men- menstruation blood, because as we mentioned in our previous d- durus, that only a certain amount of time, especially according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, it, it's considered menstruation. So uh, I believe the, the, the uh, longest time period, it is... Uh, 15 days or 13 days, but we'll have to go back and, and, and take a look at that. But it's anywhere between 13 to 15 days is considered the longest period to be considered Hayd. I think it's 13, 13 days. And so anything after that would be considered Istihada. So you would treat it with a different ruling. And as we mentioned before, Istihada or this uh, other blood, which is from sickness, which also comes from the womb area, uh, the vaginal area, is that it 
uh, you, the woman can pray and fast with, when she's istihadha. But of course during menstruation, no. Because menstrual blood, it, it, that's uh, a stronger najasa, and that's very clear. But istihadha, as the Prophet ﷺ made clear, alayhi salatu wasalam, istihadha, the woman can pray, and she should, uh, and, and also she, she, she can fast with that, that, that uh, bleeding. That which is not postnatal bleeding after birth, and uh, menstrual blood. That a woman, she can continue praying, but the ruling with that, as we find from this hadith and other ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, is that the woman must, uh, that she should make ghusl when she ends her, her term, the term that would be, that she would determine is her time for her period, she makes ghusl, and then she makes wudu for every salat. So she makes ablution for every salat instead of ghusl. But in this hadith, let's go back to the hadith. Um Habiba, so seven years she had continuously had istihadha. And then she asked the Prophet ﷺ about that. He commanded her to make ghusl. So then she made ghusl for every salat. Every time before every salat, she, after that, for the rest of her life or for the rest of this time, she had um, istihadha, that she was istihadha, that she uh, made ghusl for every salat. So then we get to the ikhtilaf of the ulama here. The scholars, they differ over the ghusl of mustahadha likul salat. So the, the point of contention between the ulama here regarding this hadith and this issue, the masail, the mas'al of fiqhiyah that we're coming to, is that the scholars, they differ, uh, they differentiated and they differed over making ghusl, you know, taking a ceremonial bath or bathing for every salat for the mustahada, for the woman who has this type of blood, which is not uh, menstrual menstruation blood or postnatal bleeding. So the woman in this state, should she make ghusl for every salat or not? That's the question. Uh, a group of the ulama, and is it an obligation or not? So some of them said it's an obligation that she should make ghusl for every salat. And they're using this hadith that we just mentioned as evidence. But majority of the scholars, Jamhur, Wadhahaba Jamhur min as salaf wa minhum Ali ibn uh, Ali wa ibn Abbas wa Aisha wa Khalaf radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa rahmatullah alayhi min ba'dihim. So a majority of the Salaf, meaning the Sahaba and the Tabi'een with Taba'a Tabi'een, like uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, they all held the view that, uh, and, and, and majority of the Salaf, and also the Imam, like Abu Hanifa, we Imam Malik, wa Ahmed, that it is not an obligation for the woman to make ghusl for every salat. Okay? So majority opinion, and Allah knows best, and I hold that view, is that it is not an obligation to make ghusl for every salat. And again, that's a statement uh, we said, Jamhur of the Salaf, most of the Salaf. And then after them, the Imams from amongst the four Imams, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, we Imam Ahmed all had held that it is not an obligation to make ghusl in that situation, but rather it is uh, mustahab. And they, their evidence for that is that they believe that the asl uh, is bara'a and that the asl is adam, uh, adam al-wujub. So that the asl or the foundation in this issue is that there's a, 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 um, a lack of obligation. So that is part of their evidence for why uh, a woman does not have to, why it's not an obligation for her to make ghusl for every salat. And
what Sheikh Ali Bassam Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said regarding this hadith, he just mentioned one main thing that we gain from this hadith, which is different from the other ahadith that we have already uh, went over. He said that this hadith shows us the obligation to make for the woman to make ghusl, the mustahava, when her period has ended. Meaning her period of her her, her 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 menstrual bleeding, when that period has been determined, it's it's so. For example, if her her regular habit is that she she has menstruation for eight days, okay, and then by the ninth day she prays, she should keep on that habit. She look at the time during the month if she's had this bleeding for nine months, for example, and she knows her habit, she will follow. She'll consider the time period which is her habit to be the time that blood is considered menstrual blood menstruation blood and the period after that she will count as her uh, time of, of, of purity and so at that period at, at the end of her period she will hustle she'll make a wajib hustle and then after that she can pray and at every salat she can uh, at every salat she should make wudu and Another thing we gain from this hadith The Shaykh mentioned when we're studying this Shaykh Abdullah Hajr Hafizullah Ta'ala he said he said this hadith is also dalil ala mustahada tahira he said Hafizullah Ta'ala that this is evidence that the woman who has istihada that she is tahir she is pure because if she wasn't pure she wouldn't be allowed to to pray she would not be making the salat or fasting in the in those other things other acts of ibadah that require tahara so this is evidence that she um, That the, the mustahada is uh, tahira. Another important thing we need to look at is, and this is the thing that the ulama they mentioned regarding this hadith, is that also this hadith, because it said that the Prophet ﷺ commanded her to, to ghusl, to make a uh, ghusl. So this is for the, the end of her mudda, meaning the end of, the end of her, her idda or her, her period, the time she, it was an obligation, he commanded her to make ghusl because her her um, her period was over and then it would be the ent entrance of her time she is she has istihada so then the, the time for the other bleeding so during that period she would make wudu for every salat and the fayda here is that um habiba radiyallahu ta'ala anha fakanat taqtasalu li kulli salat that she used to make ghusl for every salat that she would uh, w take the bath for every salat. And the ulama mentioned that was from her ijtihad. That was the ijtihad of Umm Habibata radiallahu ta'ala anha. So that this was in accordance with her, uh, her jurisprudence reasoning, if so to speak, or her uh, striving to gain the correct opinion that was from her ijtihad, but that was not what the command of the Prophet Sallallahu was or to be understood that she has to make ghusl for every salat but rather that was the order for her to make ghusl uh, when her hive is ended and then she needs to make uh, wudu for every salat during the period of istihada so that was from her ijtihad showing us that the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum they had ijtihad but not ijtihad in contrary to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as long as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was around and they had the chance to ask them, as many of the hadith we, we have already read illustrated for us, for example the hadith when the hadith of Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, who, who uh, when he, uh, he was junub, you know, he needed to, to make ghusl before making prayer, and the time for prayer came. So what he did is he, he 
you know, basically dove on the ground or, or rubbed, uh, was on the ground and he rolled around similar to the way an animal rolls around on the ground and in, in the dirt. As he, he mentioned, radiallahu ta'ala, and kama, kama tamar, so he, he, he rolled around on the earth similar to the way an animal rolls around the earth and he did that uh, out of his ijtihad. Then he asked the Prophet ﷺ when he met the Prophet ﷺ later because he wanted, he was preparing himself for Salat. And the Prophet ﷺ responded to him. So then he, he asked for the fatwa or he asked for the, what's the hukum here? Because here's what I thought, because I, this is what I thought Tayyamu meant, that I needed to get my whole body ready because I was making ghusl, so I made sure all my limbs had clean earth on it. So that was his ijtihad. And then he went to the Prophet والسلام, and he asked him وسلم, and the Prophet said So the Prophet وسلم, said verily it um, was sufficient for you to do like this with your hands. And then the Prophet وسلم, hit the earth and then wiped his his uh, face and his palms, or his uh, the tops of his hands, showing us what tayammum was, and so that shows us that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in that they made ijtihad, but they did not make ijtihad muqabil al nas. That's the very important thing that we have to realize, and that's how we know if someone's ijtihad is facet or not. You know, that's one of the ways we know that if there's a Sahih text and someone is making ijtihad, making their own uh, uh, opinion based not on, on the text, but based on their view or what they feel is the most correct, and they're doing that, um, uh, you know, in contradiction to the nasus, to the text, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then that shows that that ijtihad of theirs is batil, that it is false, it is facid, it is not accepted, and it should not be followed. Why? Because there's no la ijtihad muqabla nas. There is no ijtihad, no reasoning related to these issues in, 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 in uh, Islam, in opposition to the nas or when there is a nas, when there is a text. If there's a text, a clear text, then there's no room for ijtihad at that point because it's already mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ ordered this, so now you can't say, well, I think for this reason and this reason and I'm looking at other hadith and, I'm, and I feel this and this and this. No, that's not for us to, to make those judgments and especially if it contradicts the nas. And, we, and, and Ahl Ijtihad is the one who are Ahlan for that. They're the ones who have that ability to not make uh, uh, verdicts in contradiction to the Prophet Sallallahu but rather to look at the text and they know many of the nasuls and many of the hadith and they're the ones who look in case it appears that two uh, hadith or two nasuls uh, so the text are, appear to have some sort of contradiction, then they're the ones who can combine that evidence because they're ahl fiqh because they have understanding of the religion and they know kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they know the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah and they're able uh, to, they've reached that level of ijtihad where they can uh, look at those texts and make a verdict. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the shaitan. وصلى الله وسلم على النبي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم